Good to have you here with us today. I'm excited to talk about uh, what's coming. We, uh, of course, with uh, every release of NX, we bring out uh, a, a whole bunch of new content every six months these days. <laughs> and, uh, and as part of that, we have some pretty extensive uh, what's new presentation content that, that usually is about 15 hours of, of content every time. Um, and uh, so today I'm not going to go through that 15 hours of content, but rather uh, talk about some high level uh, things that are going on and, and in particular some future direction of, of where we're going. And uh, hopefully that will, uh, will be useful for you here today. Um, four big pillars, I guess, I want to talk about here today. Uh, there are in particular four areas where uh, we're, we're doing some exciting things and uh, want to talk about each of these uh, in, a, in a little bit more detail. Uh, with each of these, we'll have a, a slide kind of like this one that is going to look like a timeline here with, with uh, a section on the left that talks about where we've been, uh, what we've done, and uh, kind of the, the yeah where, where we've been recently. <laughs> There's a today in the middle with some things that we're doing right now, and, uh, and of course, a uh, future direction here as well that is going to talk about uh, some of the new things that are, that are happening. Um, let's see, Emma just reminded me to turn on my camera, so I'll do that too. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Uh, so with that, uh, we'll start here with this collaboration one, right? We, of course, um, have, have had for many, many years, this ability to work with, uh, teams of engineers as we work with, with NX and in particular, uh, Team Center, hence the name. <laughs> and, uh. And uh, so doing that, of course, we, we are able to do things like, like check in and check out, of course, and, and build to existing structures and things like that so that we can, we can be uh, working well together and not stepping on each other and, and so forth. And, and, uh, and as we, we come into the, the, the today state here, you'll, you'll notice that in recent releases and, and even more so in, in NX2312, uh, we have some new uh, ability there to do some real-time uh, change notification kinds of things, right? As we have teams working in assemblies, uh, as parts are modified and things like that, we can start to uh, identify and uh, bring to your attention uh, more quickly and easily things that have changed uh, so that uh, you, you can be aware of those kinds of things. We have less latency where people are designing to the wrong data or designing to data that, that just changed a couple minutes ago. And uh, and so this is, uh, this is awfully helpful. <laughs> And uh, it certainly certainly helps with with collaboration. Heading into the future here, you're going to see us do much more of this, right? And and in fact, make uh, more make this be more and more real time, right? Um, there are some some cool things coming here again. If you pay attention and watch, particularly in this next uh, early access program, if you participate in our EAP program, uh, you'll be able to see see this uh, even before it comes out, a little bit before it comes out. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but yeah, there's some very, very exciting things here with multi-user collaboration, multi-user simultaneous uh, editing kinds of situations that uh, that, that are pretty cool. Uh, so we're going to bring bring some very exciting new collaboration technologies here into uh, into NX. We're, we're many of these are going to overlap. We'll talk a little bit more about collaboration in the context of of virtual reality uh, in a minute. Uh, but uh, but yeah, this is a uh, first little bit here. Key, key part of this, of course, is the move uh, toward NXX. And if you're familiar familiar with NXX, NXX, NXX is really our full SaaS version of NX, right? Uh, it is NX, right? The, the licensing is, is, uh, is a SaaS licensing out there, software as a service. And, uh, and this, is, uh, this is pretty cool. This is an exciting thing uh, for us and, and hopefully for you as well. Uh, this starts to let us deploy uh, NX in some some really interesting ways. Um, in particular, what this does is move the uh, the management of the license server and and all of the details of that uh, over on our side, <laughs> so you don't have to mess with that. And uh, really, as you set up NX, rather than pointing to setting up a local license server and and sticking in your license file and and doing doing all of that kind of stuff, and then pointing everybody's machines with, with an environment variable or whatever toward the right license server, it, the license server just looks at the cloud, right? And, uh, and knows, uh, knows where to go and, and uh, does all of that in, in a very, very automatic way, which is really nice. Um, 
this uh, this really is the exact same NX product, right? Uh, it's it's the same UI, it's the same tools that you're used to. Uh, we can do this here with uh, software that's installed locally, so you can have it still on your hardware if you want to, and uh, installed on your desktop and in a very very familiar way. Still interact with local files if you're doing things in uh, the the operating system. Um, if you want to use uh, some some integrated data management and some online uh, cloud-based things where you have some connections to that too that we'll we'll talk about in more detail at at, at some point. And uh, there's an optional way to do this uh, streaming it as well. If you want to have the software actually installed in the cloud and and stream it through a browser, that's very doable these days. And again, it's the exact same software, right? Uh, so very straightforward to uh, to do this and set this up. Um, the the one thing you'll notice, in fact, as you uh, as you look at uh, the UI, this is the normal, of course, NX UI, and uh, and we see the toolbar there at the top, and and in the upper right hand corner, you see the the Siemens logo right there, right? Uh, just to the left of that logo, when you're running with NXX, the thing you'll notice is a, a new little circle there, right? And this is really the only difference in the in the user interface, and what this is doing is is uh, letting you know that you're logged into NX now, right? Uh, previously, we've not had you uh, actually, uh, your, your name associated with your NX session, right? But uh, but we'll have a, a particular user associated with an NX session uh, with NXX, and that's, that's super, super useful in the context of, again, collaboration, right? As we start to do more and more of this, these collaborative tools, um, it's, it's useful to know who is working near you, right? And who uh, is making changes and uh, who may be modifying the part immediately adjacent to yours and and, uh, and who you need to start a conversation with, right? To resolve uh, any design questions and, and challenges that may come up. So so that this really, again, uh, NXX is NX. It's the same NX software you're familiar with. Uh, again, licensing will be in the cloud. Uh, you'll see this little circle with your initials on it to, to let, uh, let you know that, that uh, it's you logged in and uh, to let people around you uh, in the design know that that uh, this is you, right? So really exciting. And uh, and again, if you can, this is a thing that you can uh, certainly purchase and start to take advantage of today. Uh, Saratech folks can help you with that, of course. And uh, again, we'd love for you to join us with some of the early access program testing uh, the, in the uh, in coming releases here so that you can uh, you can get uh, on top of the the, uh, the, the new things uh, very quickly here and, and see see how this is working. Uh, all right, next uh, area we'll talk about a little bit here is multidisciplinary. Uh, as we talk about multidisciplinary, of course, there are lots of disciplines, right? And so we'll we'll hit a few of these here as, as we go through. Um, we're, we're doing some cool things here. Again, um, interesting crossovers with, with different domains. Uh, of course, with the purchase of, of Mentor, uh, there are uh, some really exciting things happening here with mechanical and electrical design, right? Uh, we historically here, again, with the timeline slide here, historically on the left, have uh, have had the ability for a long time, of course, to, to do uh, some integration with various uh, electrical design ECAD solutions out there, uh, usually using net lists, right? Uh, lists that, that describe kind of the relationships between uh, various objects in the electrical design and, and then using those to go in and, and do really the, the, the transfer from a 2D electrical schematic design into a 3D uh, mechanical design where we need to figure out where everything is going to go in 3D, right? How it's going to package together and not run into each other and then and then have room to, to make all of the connections uh, between things. As our routing product manager likes to talk about, the, the long skinny things that go between the, the, the chunky things. But um, is, as we look at the current state here, again, with um, with NX and in particular Capital, uh, the, the harness application from Enter uh, being part of the fold now, uh, we can start to do some things that, that we couldn't before in terms of um, really having these two products talk with each other very, very well. Um, they can be, uh, of course, running near each other, as you see in the, the image here in the second in, in the second or, or center section. And, uh, and we can start to do, as it describes here, some cross probing and, and things between those. So, uh, you, you know, usually the, the ECAD designer and the MCAD designer are not the same person, but, but it's very common that there's a, a liaison type person or a uh, an, an integration integration engineer that that's in the middle there that that looks at these kinds of issues and and so uh, so this is exciting right to be able to to integrate these domains in a new way that we haven't haven't been able to before um, we of course are maintaining our open uh, interfaces here for the other ECAD solutions right so 
to our existing solutions here for, for being able to bring in netlists and, and do things like we have in the past are not going away. We, of course, recognize that we're not the only game in town. And, uh, and so we're, we're happy to continue working with, with other uh, productive partners here. Um, as we go out into the future there, uh, again, you're going to see some crossover here with some of the other, the, the other four pillars that, that we're talking about. But uh, in particular, as we start to look at these in, in more and more complex contexts here, uh, that, that situation where we have multiple designers start to gang up on a complex uh, harness, for instance, starts to, uh, to become more and more frequent, right? There are some linchpin parts, usually in designs, or linchpin assemblies that are things that need to get touched by a lot of people, right? And, and interact with a lot of systems out there. And, and big harnesses are certainly one of those often. Uh, and so this ability to start to bring multiple designers here into uh, a harness and have multiple designers work on different parts of a harness at the same time uh, is going to be super exciting here. Um, bottom one there as well, you start to see AI start to come in here, right? There's some very, very interesting things that happen. Uh, when you have a, a large body of harness designs to be able to look at and harvest and understand, um, study uh, and, and understand, uh, have, have AI start to understand the right places for things to go. And, uh, and so this is, uh, this is an exciting area for us and place where you're going to see some cool uh, innovation here coming very soon. All right, another domain uh, related here is the, the printed circuit board space, right? There's a new product here actually that we're bringing out here with NX2312 that we have brought out. That's this NX PCB Exchange Connect. And this is a really cool application. This is a, a cloud-based application here that really allows a mechanical team and an electrical team to come together and start to, to collaborate um, in particular design review kinds of, of uh, scenarios here. Uh, for reviewing a design, both the 2D representation of that and the 3D representation of that uh, in a browser and, and be able to, to uh, examine the key parameters here and, and see what's going on. Um, you'll see this, this uh, kind of three at the top here, the assembly, the compare, and the collaborate, right? Um, of course, you're able to, to, to cross probe and, and understand what's happening with the specific components that are inside there. Um, there is some ability here on the compare side to start to look at these from revision to revision and see what's happening, uh, what's changing specifically, right, as we move through a design. Um, the interesting one on the collaboration side is, is starting to uh, keep a record of the changes that are made, right, and the decisions that are made as we go from one, uh, one revision to another revision here. Um, it's an interesting phenomena there, right? As we as we look at engineering change, that uh, we we historically have been really good at saving the last revision, right? <laughs> saving the final version, and uh, we've got the good one uh, in the end. Um, there's a whole bunch of interesting knowledge and information that goes by in the changes, right? And that it, are, are all of the reasons why we make the changes, why we chose to do this versus that. Um, there's a, a ton of learning that's that's in all of the dead ends, right? And in all of the reasons why we changed it, and, uh, and so keeping a record of that in, in this collaboration uh, kind of kind of area is uh, we think going to be a rich source of of uh, engineering knowledge going forward. That uh, again we uh, we expect to use in some cool ways. Uh, let's see, next uh, section here, the next uh, domain really is is the analysis space here, as you can see. We, we, of course, have done some cool things in recent releases here on the far left uh, with, uh, again, topology and shape optimization stuff. And uh, we've got our new Design Space Explorer, Explorer uh, product there as well, starting to bring in the really, really robust um, HEADS uh, optimization engine, Sherpa engine, uh, into NX there uh, for, for Design Space Exploration, which is really, really an optimization, which is really nice. Um, these days, you, you start to see our um, performance predictor products, right, that are really exciting here. And uh, this is starting to use some new technology for analysis uh, that's very, very fast. <laughs> and uh, we're starting to get to some, some very close to real-time uh, analysis results here as we make changes to, to NX design models. And uh, it shows there, yeah, leveraging GPUs in particular, right, to speed up those, those, uh, that, that analysis. Um, as we start to get out into the cloud here on the right, uh, there are some really cool things that happen as you get to cloud uh, compute resources, right? And uh, so, of course, working very closely with our Sim Center uh, companions uh, within the company, uh, there, there's some exciting things that happen when you've got really, really 
powerful compute resources available and start, things start to really become real time, <laughs> which is which is super exciting. Um, one thing you'll see very soon here, it's not in NX2312, but, but coming up very, very soon is, uh, as it says here, a designer level CFD tool. Um, here again, using a very, very fast uh, solver that uh, is again, gonna give us the ability as we're working to start to see some very, very quick feedback on uh, computational fluid dynamics, fluids, uh, interactions here with uh, with NX designs, so super exciting space here, and uh, and watch watch for more here, <laughs> and uh, and uh, here again AI is going to be a, an interesting part of this as we as we go forward. Um, another domain is uh, is kind of going to the very very big and the very very small, right? Uh, for many years, for a couple of few decades, uh, if you're familiar with Parasolid, you you may have known that Parasolid has historically had this kind of one kilometer cube, the parasolid cube, that uh, is a space that, that you would model in, and any given model was going to need to fit in that parasolid cube. Um, we've, uh, we've made some very fundamental changes to parasolid, right, to start to enable uh, some really, really large models to, to be created, particularly for the, the uh, architecture, uh, engineering, construction, AEC space, uh, it, which related to this BIM space, right? Building information modeling here. So starting to get into to structural, very, very large structures, um, buildings and bridges and, and roadways and, and, and some things like that, that are uh, infrastructure projects and factories that are, that are enormous, <laughs> some really, really big ones. And, uh, and it's exci exciting to see those, those inside NX these days. Um, marine as well. There's some really, really big ships in the world these days <laughs> that are interesting. Uh, for a long time, there were a lot of boats that were were de were, were uh, designed at what they call the Panamax uh, dimensions, which were the the largest size that could fit through the Panama Canal, right? And uh, and in a lot of markets, they're starting to just give up on that and go and they call them the Trans Panamax ones, right? <laughs> that are bigger than can fit through the Panama Canal, and uh, some enormous vessels that people are working on. And so, yeah, having having the ability to handle those kind of data sets and the complexity of those kind of data sets is important to us. And uh, and so there's some really cool fundamental um, performance things that we've done there for extremely large assemblies that that uh, we think are going to be useful for everybody when it comes down to it. Um, but uh, but open up some interesting new doors for us here. Um, as as you're guessing, as you already probably looked in the the lower right over there, we're also now going smaller, right? And uh, again, with our relationships with with Mentor and and uh, bringing them inside these days, um, we're doing more and more at at very 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 small levels now too, right? Getting into not just micro kind of things, but down to nano, and and you can now model inside NX some of the very very smallest manufacturable features in the world, right? Down at the just a a couple of of nanometers uh, size. We can we can uh, model very nicely actually in 3D now, which is which is pretty cool. Some fascinating little tiny structures that that people are are doing, and uh, cool to be able to represent those in inside NX. Um, good. So big and small, right? Making some real fundamental changes here to the the engine and and how it works. Um, another cool new domain here is corrosion, right? This is an exciting new product we think is unique uh, within our space here that is uh, looking at this, this galvanic corrosion concept. So applicable across, across lots of industries. If you're, if you're working on trains, planes, and automobiles, and, and pretty much anything that moves, uh, anything that's gonna be near water, <laughs> right? Uh, this, this usually is a, an issue here. So uh, galvanic corrosion is looking at really dissimilar metals that are near each other, uh, touching each other in a design, and uh, where, where you've got an electrolyte. And, uh, and salty water is the most common one of those. <laughs> and uh, so, so yeah, there's a partner here that you see in the middle at Cordessa that, that's an awesome company. Uh, their gin software is, is uh, one that looks at this galvanic corrosion risk. And, uh, and, and so this starts to look at the materials that are used in your design, including coatings that may be on those materials that, that help, of course, to, to inhibit corrosion. But, uh, but looks at those dissimilar metals where those dissimilar metals come in contact with each other and uh, and really looks at those materials on this galvanic uh, galvanic index scale, and uh, and starts to determine which ones are the anode and which ones are the cathode, and and uh, and lets you know where there are risks for for uh, corrosion here, right? Uh, if you have a, a a boat of some kind, it's very common that you're familiar with sacrificial anodes, and you may re replace your sacrificial anodes, for instance, and so it's a very very common problem. 
and uh, and uh, yeah, fascinating new software here to to be able to do this again. New product here with NX twenty three twelve, and uh, really interesting reception here as we we talk with the industry about this. Um, related to the construction one a minute ago is this one, this reinforced concrete design. This is another another interesting new one uh, where we're starting to look at the, uh, the really the precast shapes. So these are ones that will be a, a structural member, usually of some type that's that put together in a factory really first, and then usually shipped uh, to a construction site and assembled on site. But uh, but kind of an interesting one here where we have an exterior shape that we're trying to create, and then we're going to populate that essentially with some rebar inside. And there's some different kinds of uh, rebar geometries that go in there. But but uh, for the, the folks that are doing these kinds of sections, it's, it's apparently common uh, that, that you have to really put in this rebar again and again. If you change the shape, you have to redo the rebar, right, in, in various ways. And, and of course, as we get into NX, you know, users who are familiar with NX are, are used to having things be parametric and associative. And, and so as we start to do this with, with rebar inside structures here, as we change the outside shape, the rebar adapts, right? Comes along for the ride, changes shape automatically and gets bigger where it needs to get bigger and adds new ones or removes them to, to maintain spacing and so forth in, in very automatic ways. This, uh, this apparently is very exciting for this industry. So, so that's, that's fun to watch, uh, fun to, always fun to watch new, new folks uh, come into the fold and, and start to see what NX can do for them. And, uh, and this, so, so yeah, we're, we're excited about the potential in here, potential here for, for AEC and where this is going. Um, lattice. Yeah. As we look, look at 3d printing and, and look in particular additive manufacturing and all of its incarnations and, and, uh, and the, the really fascinating parts that you can start to create with uh, when, when these kinds of new manufacturing process or processes, process processes are an option. Um, yeah, there's some exciting new things here with Lattice. Uh, you see some conformal stuff uh, up there on the, the upper left where we're, uh, our grid is really following the shape of, of the, the, the object. Um, some organic blending stuff, of course, as we get into very, very large lattices, we're looking at, at faceted structures there instead of, of uh, traditional B-rep kind of models just because of the base, the, the, the huge volume of, of geometry that's happening there. Uh, so for robustness, uh, of course, that's that's uh, and and editability and so forth, going with faceted kinds of representations is is very very productive here, and and uh, we're getting better and better at making those very smooth and and uh, and nice, good transitions, strong transitions, and things that are that are happening there too. So so an exciting area here, um, lots of exciting things happening, and and uh, very very interesting set of new things that are coming along every release here. There's more even more coming here. <laughs> um, good. Uh, immersive. Uh, immersive is getting very exciting too. Uh, we, of course, historically here, you've seen us over the last few releases uh, do uh, and some initial overhaul here of, of our uh, visualization and rendering. Lots and lots of new materials and, and things that we've put into the system. Um, we, of course, brought the, uh, the team from Lightworks, has historically been our, our partner here in this space, uh, brought them in-house. They're part of Siemens now. Uh, which opens up some cool doors for us and a wonderful team over in Sheffield, Sheffield, England that uh, is working here with us. So you start to see more and more of that, uh, more of and more of that work today um, as we're heading out here and we'll talk more about a, a new application here in, in just a minute, but, uh, but heading out here into the future, there's some exciting things coming here from, from new hardware to uh, of course, new software and, and uh, interesting things that are, that are going on. Um, speaking of hardware, uh, this is this is not the hardware. This is <laughs> this is a, j another image, but but uh, yeah, there's some really cool things here happening with our, our partnership with Sony that you may have heard about at the CES show uh, earlier this year. Um, uh, Sony, of course, is a, a relatively new NX customer. They've been with us now for several years, but but uh, we have been working with them to design a, a, a new headset specifically for the MCAD market, right? And uh, this is a headset that that we will be selling. Siemens will be selling, uh, specifically. And uh, if you uh, join us at the Realize Live conference here in a few weeks, just a few weeks in Las Vegas, uh, you can put it on and use it, try it. And uh, and uh, we had it actually at our early access uh, testing in uh, the Costa Mesa office um, last month as well. And uh, yeah, it was very, very cool to, to watch all of the attendees there uh, get to try it on. I, of course, helped with that and, and, and tried it on myself. And we, it's really been fun working with these guys with this in the last couple of years. 
Um, they had some prototypes last year that were uh, the beginnings of this, and the the the, the display is just otherworldly. <laughs> it's it's a it's a an, it's an astonishingly clear image, uh, very very high res, uh, 4K both eyes, uh, with 4K camera pass through for both eyes uh, as well, uh, and so so it really opens up some fascinating new workflows specifically for for mechanical design. Uh, again, the device is designed specifically for mechanical design. It's, it's not a, a, a consumer grade kind of VR device. Um, this is a, a whole new ball game and some really fascinating new interactions here as well that are part of that. So uh, again, encourage you to, to keep an eye on that. Um, if you can join us in, in, uh, in Las Vegas for Realized Live, again, get your hands on it and, and see how it works. Uh, it was fascinating to hear at, at EAP, actually, at the early access testing, a, a couple of different customers that described having VR headsets at every designer's desk already, right? And and so the, this is becoming, interestingly, a, a mainstream way to, to interact with designs and, and visualize them and understand what's going on there, which is, uh, which is super exciting. Um, we talk about collaboration uh, again. This is a, a, another place where we're going to start to see more and more collaboration more and more people getting together in the VR space to do design reviews out there, as well as different disciplines, right? They're going to be able to get in there, not just look at the design, but but look at the analysis of the design and, and look at those results in some very, very high fidelity ways that are uh, that are really game changing. It's really exciting to watch this watch this come together. So hope you can uh, yeah get with us and join the join 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 this party here as we as we get started. Um, there is new product here, as I mentioned, the Zenix Immersive Explorer. Uh, we've really uh, kind of changed horses here on on virtual reality. We we have a, uh, brought this in house and and uh, are, have some really cool new capabilities here. Uh, again, this this team in Sheffield is is doing a tremendous job on this. Um, a bunch of of new capabilities again in terms of collaboration, a whole new UI inside the user experience inside of inside of VR here uh, as well. And uh, and so yeah, we're really pleased with where this is going. The performance is awesome uh, on a variety of devices, right? And uh, and so here again, yeah, I encourage you to take a look at this. Oh, a big part of this here too is not just in the headset either, right? There's a desktop mode here as well that that uh, allows you to do a whole bunch of these kind of of uh, uh, design review functions, uh, but do them do the, do them using your existing monitors or or your you know big monitors, big displays in your in your uh, uh, meeting rooms, right? All right, uh, last one here, the AI driven. Uh, this one again has been exciting space for us. We, uh, we the industry tells us <laughs> that, that we were the first to market with, with AI inside of CAD. And uh, we've done a variety of things there with that. The command predictor, of course, has, has been in there now for, for a few years. Um, so you'll see here in the, in the center, some more of that. Um, in previous releases, you've seen us, uh, seen our voice assistant uh, application come out there, being able to talk to NX and, and drive NX with, with voice, uh, doing more and more there, right? Uh, you see on the right there, more work here with natural language processors, large language models, and, and so forth to, uh, to do some more flexible things and, and very interesting um, uh, things here with voice. Uh, selection prediction and and again select similar and and some of those these kinds of things as well. We're we're again starting to leverage um, some some fascinating ability to do machine learning and understand how people use NX right in in very in the most productive ways and uh, and then start to predict and help where we can here um, in in non obtrusive ways. We're not very much avoiding becoming clippy <laughs> we're, we're very much trying to make this a, a thing that that's useful and, and doesn't get in the way but uh, but accelerates what you're doing in in, uh, in productive ways um over on the the right here uh, again we mentioned natural language processors out there uh you'll see some parameter prediction things uh in predictor in in particular coming in here uh soon um one of those the the image here is a plastic one uh this relates to Really, some cool stuff we're doing in our molded part designer product. This new uh, product that we have around molded plastic part design, uh, and in particular, look at draft. Draft is an interesting issue with molded plastic parts, and figuring out how to get draft applied in all the places it needs to be applied, and and uh, and how to get that set up so that the model is uh, is appropriately thick in all the places it should be thick, and thin where it should be thin, and uh, and maintain the draft where it needs to be drafted, and and so. Here again, um, AI has been very interesting here, right? And this is one of the places to, you'll, you'll see us apply uh, some really cool assistance uh, in, in uh, inside NX uh, in, in one of the first applications we're ever doing this. 
Um, again, this is also available now in, in NX2312, and you'll see that particularly again in the draft command inside, inside the molded part designer, right? Good. Uh, select similar faces here as well. This has been around uh, for, for I think, one release, and, and there's some more of this here in, in 2312 as well. But again, for certain applications here, there are the regions of the model that are, that are similar regions that are not uh, necessarily the out-of-the-box features that, that were used to create these regions, but, but they're similar regions that you need to op operate on to do, do some certain operations. And we can start to recognize those, uh, recognize those, even if they're they're a little bit different geometrically, right? But uh, but still have the same kind of topology, the same sets of faces that are related to each other in, in various types of attachment features and things like that, and uh, and operate on those in very, very efficient ways. Good. So again, uh, four new products here uh, with NX2312, that Immersive Explorer, talking about all of the visualization things is super exciting. Uh, again, love to have you with us at Realize Live and, and be able to, to take an early look at this should be available generally here this coming December uh, as well for uh, the, the headset, sorry, in December. <laughs> Immersive Explorer is uh, available now. <laughs> and uh, But yeah, I would love to have you come and, and check out the new hardware here as well. Uh, corrosion, again, super exciting for, for a whole bunch of industries out there. Um, again, we think we're leading the pack in, in terms of making this available, this analysis available inside, inside the design space. Um, concrete design, uh, again, super exciting for in the architecture space there. And then PCB Connect, uh, Exchange Connect down there for uh, some really, really cool collaboration in the cloud uh, between mechanical and electrical designers here. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, with that, uh, again, it's been great to be with you and uh, exciting to, to be able to introduce some of the, the direction of where we're going. Um, again, there's lots and lots of new uh, what's new content that's available out there. And uh, uh, encourage you to take a look at the, the details of that for the, the areas that are of most interest to you. Um, so with that, I'll, I'll turn it back over to Abby, and and uh, yeah, we can see if there are any questions. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Taylor. Yeah. So if you want to go to that next slide, we can start the Q and A session. Sure, we can do that right there. Uh huh. Perfect. Okay, so our first question is going to be with NXX. What happens if I lose my internet connection? Will NXX stop working? Yeah, yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, and, and I, I personally was concerned about that actually myself. Um, uh, of course, in, in what I do as a, a product manager with NX, I'm, I'm often traveling, right. And I'm often going out and meeting with customers on site at their places. Um, oftentimes I cannot get an internet connection inside, inside certain companies <laughs> and, uh, certain industries in the world. And so, yeah, NXX is, uh, certainly has the ability to cash the license there. As you go offline, it does not just drop you. <laughs> so you, you certainly are, are able to, to still maintain your NX session, uh, continue to use NX for, for several hours uh, at a time after you've, uh, af after you've uh, dropped offline, right? Um, data, of course, yeah, if your, your data store is in the cloud uh, and you lose the internet connection, you're, you're not connected to the, the data store anymore uh, out there. Uh, so yeah, there may be a need there to, to have some data that you're going to work on locally, right? Uh, so that you can uh, continue to do that while you're on the plane or, or uh, while you're traveling and so forth. But, um, but yeah, NX the session, uh, including tokens actually, right? If you have ch tokens uh, checked out for various applications, you, you still have access to those uh, during a, again, a several hour period period after you, uh, after you lose your, lose your connection to, to the cloud, which should be very rare again, if it's, if it's not intentional. So good. Hopefully that helps. Okay. Thank you. And then our next question is going to be, what is the planned battery life of the new Sony VR device? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, talking with the Sony guys, uh, again, last month while they were here, it sounds like that plan is for a three and a half hour battery life. So you should be able to use it, uh, like basically use it all morning and then charge it while you're having lunch and then, and then use it again in the afternoon. Um, if, if you're going to use it all day, uh, often probably won't be on your head all day, but, but, uh, super comfortable. And, uh, again, uh, if you want to use it in a tethered mode, there actually is a USB-C connection there as well. So you could have continuous power if you wanted, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a very functional and, uh, exciting, exciting device. Okay, cool. And then our next question, will we be able to do multi-user design reviews in NX Immersive Explorer? 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's a great question. And and yes, that's that's absolutely part of what's intended there, right? Is to be able to get teams together in that virtual space. Again, either using headsets or using uh, monitors, right? But but to be able to get get a team together in in uh, that that immersive space to be able to do design reviews, yeah.